Okay, guys, um, I did my first little video this morning, but um, it just occurred to me after I was watching it that this one's going to be about chronic fatigue and, and, my, and my story about that. I think it's important that we share our stories about that disease. Um, my uh, trip into the abyss started in um, uh, July 2011. I was working at uh, Wolf Creek Indian Village Museum and we were rebuilding the village down below. Uh, we were working outside. I w it's very hot. It's July. In July in the mountains, July anywhere is hot. But we were actually doing a lot of physical, physical labor that spring and that summer. Now I had been diagnosed with fibromyalgia in like 1988 or so. And at that time I was working two part-time jobs uh, going to school full time and had two kids and a husband that was going crazy because he just got disabled off the railroad. So I just lied. I just, you know, they called it the yuppie flu. That's what they called fibromyalgia. And so I didn't take it seriously. I didn't say, oh, well, that's what I got. You know, I was tired. I was tired because I was doing a lot. Now looking back, I can see that I had some of the symptoms of fibromyalgia to begin with. And it had been, um, uh, years I lived off of I hurt my back in the 90s early 90s um, and uh, I had uh, lived on ibuprofen for almost 15 years 800 milligrams of ibuprofen at a whack and I would just push myself and push myself and push myself so I didn't think I had fibromyalgia I, looking back now I do see the symptoms that are real similar to con uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and that I did have it but I didn't recognize that it was yuppie flu and I just blew it off uh, which is probably probably why I probably went into full-blown chronic fatigue I don't know uh, we don't know I don't know what happened okay so in July 2011 I'm working outside helping to build these structures doing outside displays uh, putting things together and my heart starts doing weird things it's just boop, 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 and I go Whoa. All of a sudden, I'd just be really tired, like I couldn't put one foot in front of the other, and then I just keep going. But I'd come home and I just stare, just sit and just stare because I just couldn't move. Everything on me just hurt, and I was tired. So one morning I got up and it was really bad. I mean, the heart palps were just unreal. And I thought, okay, I really got to go see somebody about this. So I go to work, and um, and before I go to work, I stop in at the clinic, and they did an EKG on me, and they end, I end up taking a ambulance ride to the hospital because my heart is doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And um, uh, but I didn't have a heart attack or anything like that. And they sent me back home, and they sent me to a, a heart specialist and it did show that I had a couple little small leaky valves but nothing real major or anything like that and they really didn't know why my heart was doing that so I just I kept I took a day off and then I rested and then I went right back to work and I just felt like I was walking through mud half the time and just so tired and everything I did just seemed like the biggest chore and so um I finally went back to the doctor. I said, something's not right. So they did some blood work and uh, they found out that I had mono. And um, uh, they thought that I was at the end of the stages of the mono uh, and uh, that I should be okay. So I took a couple more days off. Didn't take weeks off. Some people take weeks off. I didn't, I didn't have that time. I was a museum programs manager. We had to be up and ready by fall. It was mid-July and there was a lot of work to do for the for the all the school groups so I just kept pushing and then but I kept feeling worse and worse and I didn't get over it it was hell going to work that fall I would go to work in the mornings I'd get there I'd work all day do the best I could and then I would come home and sometimes when you make it in the house I'd be asleep in the truck or in the in the car and then uh, or I'd make it in the house, and I'd still have my coat on, my clothes on, and I'd sleep four hours and wake up not know where in the world I was at. Didn't even remember coming home. Didn't eat, didn't do anything, just was exhausted. 
um, the brain fog that I talk about, it was really, really bad then. I couldn't get my work done. I couldn't focus. I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't. It was just like I was moving through mud and aching the whole time I was doing it. So after about December, and uh, I had a really good internist, and he was trying to help me figure this out. And we went, he sent me for tests. He sent me to doctors. He sent me all over the place. Some of the doctors I really got pissed off at, like uh, an immunologist. She goes, well, I don't know what you want me to do. I said, I don't want you to do anything. I want you to tell me what's going on. And so some doctors are more stupid than others. But we did all the tests. I mean, just $7,000 over what my insurance would pay testing. And what he thought was is that there was some kind of underlying virus that activated the EBV virus. Um, I don't know how he came to that conclusion. I've got a letter from him. He said that he's no longer at the clinic, and he wrote me this really nice letter so that I could give it to other doctors and say, this is what we did. Because uh, he knows how you get lost in the shuffle. Oh, Mac Dr. McIntyre, I, I love you wherever you are. But at any rate, um, uh, so he thought it was an underlying virus, like Lyme disease or something like that. And then we got into the Lyme thing, and, and I didn't have Lyme disease. I don't show positive for Lyme disease, but there's like 12 different diseases that ticks carry. And one of the things that happened in the spring was we, okay, at the Indian village, we used to process uh, roadkill deer um, and use them for display. And we got this one in that was covered in ticks. I mean, I have never seen a skin that bad in my life. And we didn't do anything with it. Uh, we touched it, but we basically just buried it. It was awful. Never seen anything like that. So we buried it. And I, and so I was always uh, 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 prone to being in uh, things with ticks. I mean, you work outside. I got tickled one time. We had a couple down there and said, we really don't want to go uh, if there's bugs. I'm going, you're in the woods. There's bugs. There's snakes. There's turtles. There's bears. So I just told them, I said, yeah, well, I don't think you want to go. But anyhow, um, so it, it started some kind of chain reaction, and by February of 2012, I had taken off, and I just couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. I knew I couldn't keep the level of work up that I was supposed to do. And so I resigned my job, which I just dearly loved. Now, the first year was the pits. First of all, you're dealing with a sickness. I just had lost everything that I'd worked for. And I was in a really dark place. I was in a really deep depression. And I was trying to come out of it. And um, I did. I used my blog to kind of come back, believe it or not. That blog got my brain to thinking again. And then I started uh, uh, taking medications, uh, uh, trying everything. The Lyrica doesn't work. It makes me crazy. Mm. Mm. I'm crazy as enough. I was angry crazy. So, no, they said if you have mood swings, I was mad mood swings. So I couldn't take that. And there's been some other things that we tried, gabapentin, all kinds of crazy things. And uh, basically, I just stopped that. I take some pain medications. I take uh, Avastatin for my um, high cholesterol and a heart palp thing drug. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. But at any rate, but how I got back was learning to manage the symptoms as best I can. And you can't manage them. I'm not at the point to where I can manage them to do a full-time job. There's just no way. I'm not going to be there. Um, I can't say when the symptoms are going to happen. They just jump on you. Uh, I can say I'm going to do this today. And my body goes, oh, well, you bet. <laughs> you wish you're not going to do nothing today. So it's a it's been a struggle. It's a real bad struggle. Um, how I've gotten back to most of it is I take a lot of vitamins. I take vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D, a multivitamin. Uh, not a lot, but enough to 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 where I've gotten up. And I juggle. If I know there's something that I have to do that's going to be kind of physical, then what I'll do is I'll rest a couple of days. I have to. Because if I don't, I can't do it. I won't get up out of the bed. And so you can't schedule that for like a regular job. I mean, I don't know of any employer that you can call and say, well, um, 
I can't lift my head up off the bed today. I won't be in. Sorry. You know, I used to hire people. I wouldn't hire me. So this is a, an attempt to try to become useful again. And that's what these videos are going to be. I'm trying to write a book on corn chuck crafts and corn chuck doll making and do a video on that. Might even sell that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I've got stories to tell, research that I've done, things that I can tell you about Appalachia that we know. And there's a lot of us here. I'm not the only one. Maybe I can get some guest people to talk to in our area. Because there's a lot of people here that know a lot of stuff. And, uh, but sharing it would be a really cool thing to do. And, um, and keep my mind going and keep my voice going. When you don't talk and you don't present, present, do presentations, you lose it. And I found I was losing it. I was supposed to make phone calls to people to thank them for some donations. And my brain just went dead. Dead. And I'm sitting there going, what is wrong? And, I, and then I realized I'm not using them anymore. I'm sitting here in the house. Yeah, I'm typing and I'm writing and I'm on Facebook and I do all this other crazy stuff. But I'm not using my voice anymore. And I'm not talking to people on a regular basis. This house is really quiet. I like it that way, but it's bad for the old communication skills. So this may be a way to keep those skills just a little bit better. Uh, to, and, and the mind to going and, and helping me to juggle that. Now, like I said, it takes me forever to do stuff. Uh, sometimes I, I don't get to do what I plan to do okay just life um and we'll see how this goes we'll just see how this goes right now i'm trying to isolate some music on a, uh, from my dad i thought i'd use it as an intro to my channel i thought oh this is cool he plays harmonica yeah my dad was a harmonica player got arrested for it in tassel once in front of the courthouse yeah uh, be good music. And we've got a tape of him playing that. Now, he's been dead since 1996 or so. But we, we, we found an old tape. It's not a great tape. Uh, my nephew cleaned it up a little bit, but we've got it. And so I'm probably going to use it. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But that's it. That's, uh, that's what I want to say about chronic fatigue. Um, there's a lot of websites out there that help. One of the websites that helped me the most was a thing called Fly Lady. It's a cleaning, like, site organizational site but one of the things that they do is that they have you work for 15 minutes you can do anything for 15 minutes and that's how i work i do things for 15 minutes at a time when i'm in a really bad shape and i may only do two or three sessions a day if i'm in a in the bad way in the in a full-blown crash but i got something done for maybe 30 minutes and i feel like i accomplished something when I'm in the bad days. The bad days are really bad, guys. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. I have never seen a disease this bad. And God knows where it came from. I mean, who knows? The immune system is a weird thing. I had immune problems all my life. My dad called me the Strodium 90 baby because when I was a kid and we, he was in the military, we were off the base and the, the cows around the base where are the milk producers around that area they found that they had strodium 90 in the milk and i was drinking it so who knows who knows where these things come from my son's suffering from something now called seronegative arthritis it's just nuts but we're alive and we'll get this going thanks for listening if you made it this far bye blessings today Dude. How do you turn this off?